What's up y'all? It's Chrissy from the Box Truck Couple and in today's video I'm going to be sharing with you how to put together your driver qualification file. So a lot of people have been asking in different videos in the comment section if we could do a video to show you how to put one together. And so I'm here for it and that's exactly what we're going to do today. Now I can tell you that we are non-CDL drivers so our driver qualification file is going to look a little different from a CDL driver. So this is for non-CDL owner operators who want to put together their driver qualification file for them or for them and their drivers. Either way, you're going to need one. You're going to need to keep these documents not only where you keep your records, whether it's on your computer, on a USB drive, um, or in your document section of your computer, but you're also going to need a, to keep a copy in your truck. So this can be kept, these documents can be kept in your DLT compliance binder. Now, with that being said, let's go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and we'll get into the video. Things that I had to do to prepare us for putting together our driver for qualification file was going to the Department of Driver Services so that I could obtain a copy of our motor vehicle reports. So first things first, I'm going to share with you what I did to acquire the motor vehicle record. So I, I went to Google first to find out what the steps were to obtain our motor vehicle report. Now, there are lots of options here, but I was looking for a reliable source. So I went to this website. It's dds.georgia.gov, which stands for Department of Driver Services, um, georgia.gov. So I went there and you have a couple of options. You can download the DDS to go mobile app. I didn't know anything about that. Um, is so I didn't use that option. I wanted to go in person. So step three is in person at any DDS customer service center. So if you drop, if you click the down arrow here next to it, it tells you what to do. You can request a three year, seven year or a lifetime MVR for the safety audit. We simply needed a three year. Um, so I knew that was the option that we were going to choose. And then I clicked here on motor vehicle request form because I knew that I was going to need this form to take with me. Now it says you must fill out the required form. Uh, it includes your full name, date of birth, Georgia driver's license, etc. So if you click here on this report, <clears throat> this is what the form looks like. I printed two copies, one for myself and one for my husband. If you are picking up your own copy, then you'll, you will click, I am requesting my own Georgia MVR, and then you will proceed to filling out the application. Now for yourself, you only need to fill out section one with your first name, middle name, last name, your date of birth and your driver's license. And then section three, and you'll request either a three, seven, or lifetime MVR. And then you will click the first option under section four, which is request release of my driving record, and then sign and date. That's all you need to do for your motor vehicle report. Now, if you are getting, in my case, I was also picking up my spouse motor vehicle report, or maybe you have drivers. As you hire your drivers and want to pull their MVR, this is one of the forms that you should have inside of your application process. They should fill this out to release their information so that you can pick it up. So in the case of picking up somebody else's MVR, you will click the set, sec, second option. I am requesting a Georgia MVR of another M individual. Section one is their name their date of birth and their driver's license number. And then section two would be you. Okay. So your name, 
the name of your business would be firm name and then the address of your business. So say for instance, you're getting this for John Doe. So it would be John Doe on the first line, his date of birth, 111, and his driver's license number, 1111111, okay? And in section two, you are the third party that's requesting this information. So for us, it would be Christy Vaughn. Uh, my firm name would be the name of my business, Meant to be Trucking, LLC. And then my address, which is whatever your business address is. You would next choose whether you are picking up a three, seven, three year, seven year, or lifetime MVR. And then under section four, the person whose record you're picking up would check consent to release of my driving record to the person and or entity named in section two. This is where they will check and then they will sign and date this form. So when you take this form in, you don't need a copy of their driver's license. You need a, you will though need a copy of yours, whether you're picking up yours or picking up someone else's. So that is the form um, that you will take into Department of Driver Services. Now, I went to Department of Driver Services. Once I parked and went inside, just as you can see from the video on the screen, um, the day that I went, it wasn't a lot of people at all. There was a short line at the front and you have to tell the host that's at the door what you need and she will direct, she or he will direct you to where you need to be. So there is also a board there that tells you all the services they offer. Um, but she told me that all we needed to do was to print out a ticket and then have a seat and wait on our name to be called. I feel like I did that fast. On the kiosk, you can choose if you need your driver's license and ID, motor vehicle report, if you're doing a road test or a permit test. So I clicked motor vehicle report and it printed me a ticket. I'm A07. Time to sit and wait. So as you can see, that was really simple to get a ticket. I actually never sat down. I walked over to the Peach Pass area, got the application to apply for a Peach Pass so I could go ahead and get Peach Passes for our personal vehicles. And by the time I had the application in hand, my number was being called to walk up to the desk. I didn't get any footage of that, but it was fairly simple. She took both forms. She did one at a time. It took her about five minutes. She looked at my driver's license, put all the information in the system, printed um, my MVR. I paid $6 for it, and then she moved, handed it to me, and then she moved to my husband's. She didn't ask any questions about his. Matter of fact, I'm not even sure if I show her my license for um, his because all of the information was on the paperwork. Paid her the $6 and I was done. 10 minutes top, I was done. So the MBR portion is really, really simple, you guys. That's all you have to do if you're going into the Department of Driver Services to pick up your MBR. Okay. So now that we have um, gone over how to do the, how to go pick up your motor vehicle report, now we're gonna take a look at our drive for qual driver qualification file. So as you can see, this is my desktop and I actually have just the folder that says driver qualification file and it has everything that I need for our driver qualification file as an owner operator. Now you're gonna have a few more items if you have drivers, but as owner operators, this is what we have. The first thing we have is the driver list, okay? So you should always have a record of all your drivers. It's just me and my husband. Um, however, if you have drivers, it doesn't matter if you have two drivers or 10 drivers, you should always have a list of those drivers 
uh, with their date of birth, date of hire, driver's license number, and the state of the of their driver's license. That's real important. If you have this on file, when you go to do your safety audit, you don't have to look for this information. You already had it. It's as simple as uploading it to the system. The next thing you need in your driver qualification file is a vehicle list. Now, we only have one vehicle. Um, if you have more than one, then all of them should be listed here. It should include your vehicle name, the unit number of your vehicle. Our, we just, whenever somebody requests our vehicle number, we just say 01. Um, but maybe yours is 255 or 5125. I don't know. Whatever your unit number, you should have that on file along with the VIN number and your license plate on your vehicle list. Again, if you have this together when you need it, you don't have to look for it. The next thing you're going to need is proof of insurance. Now, we have two forms of proof of insurance. I keep a copy of my certificate of liability insurance. Um, in this file, but if you were doing your something for the FMCSA, then you would actually need what's called a MCS 90. So we keep a copy of that as well. It's called the MCS 90 and you can get that from your insurance company. But this is the official document that should be in your, this is the official document that should be in your driver qualification file. All right, the next thing you're gonna need, I'm looking at my notes. The next thing you're gonna need is all copies of the medical card, your DOT medical card. You'll get that from your, um, you have, every driver has to have a DOT medical card. So every driver listed in your driver's list, you should have a copy of their DOT medical card on file. You also need a copy of their MVR. Everybody MVR is not going to look the same. Um, if they have a, a record or a history on their MVR, it could be longer than this. Come on, Georgia, or whatever state you're in, letterhead, and you should have a copy of all drivers in your record. If you have, um, not if you have, if you own your own vehicle, then you will have a um, annual inspection. Um, I had a copy of the annual inspection from last year um, and it's actually coming up for renewal, but this is what the record of annual inspection looks like. I'm not talking about when you get pulled on the side of the road. I'm talking about when you go have your once a year annual vehicle inspection or preventative maintenance inspection, then this is, um, well, there's a preventative maintenance and then there's an annual inspection. Annual this inspection that you should have on file. It should be in your driver record as well as in your vehicle. That's it, you guys. That's all we have in our driver qualification file. Now, if you have drivers, you're going to have their applications for employment. You're going to have their, um, uh, maybe you submitted a um, the last three years of employment and gotten verification. You're gonna have a copy of that. You're going to need, if you have given them a road test, you'll need a copy of that. Um, and I believe that is it. But, um, oh, if you've done a drug test on them, you'll have copies of that in there. Um, any paperwork that you provided for them as a part of their employment, you should have a record of that in your driver qualification file. But that's only if you actually hire and manage drivers. The driver qualification file that we have is actually based off of us being owner operators and owning our own vehicle. This is the paperwork that we needed. And this is also the paperwork that you will need when you complete your first safety audit. So if you want to see what happened on our safety audit, the paperwork we've um, submitted, hear what happened in the conversation, um, we'd be happy to do a, a video 
uh, regarding the safety audit that we underwent, just leave it in the comment section below and we will make a video about it, okay? Well, that's it, you guys. Again, this was just to show you how to put together a driver qualification file. If you have any questions about anything that I've said here today, make sure you comment below. If you're currently not subscribed, make sure you do that and turn on your notification bell so you know every time we upload a video, okay? All right, see you in the next video.